car and as you can hear this webinar is being recorded um, Zucar of course are the official performance partner of the LGFA and we're delighted to have them on board and in 2021 the year just gone you would have seen two very nice uh, awards handed out uh, from Zucar the golden boot which was awarded to Clean Lee Hay from Carlo um, following her exploits in the TG Car Championship she finished as top scorer and we also had Rianne McGrath from Longford won the Golden Glove Award for an outstanding save uh, for her county, which helped to preserve their TG Car Intermediate Championship status. Um, so two very, very nice pieces uh, this year. And of course, um, Zoo Car are also sponsors of our Gaelic for Teens program. Um, so I'll just check how many. We've got a few people um, in. We'll give it another minute or so and then we'll 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 kick start um proceedings here folks okay okay what we we will kick it off so uh, without further ado i'm going to introduce um first of all myself i'm jackie cahill and the commercial and communications manager with the ladies gaelic football association and i have three very special guests uh with me this evening um, so on the top left hand side of my screen as I look is Mary Nolan who is Executive Assistant Group Communications Manager and Mary joined the Do Do Joe Duffy Group in 2014 from the Financial Services Health Sector where she held various senior roles including Head of Group Marketing and Communications and Strategic Planning and Mary reports directly to the Group Chief Executive as his Assistant as his Executive Assistant as well as being the Group's Communications Manager. Mary, welcome. So that's Thank Mary Nolan. Much. I'm delighted to be on this package. Good stuff, Mary, and we'll, we'll be chatting to you very, very soon. I'm going to also introduce bottom left-hand side of my screen is Gillian Fanning. And Gillian is Marketing Director of Automotive Distributor Serfac Limited in Dublin, and she was elected President oh, of the so Society there. of the Irish Motor Industry, SIMI, at the organization's AGM in May 2020. She is the first female president of SIMI in the society's 99-year history. Uh, Gillian has extensive motor industry experience serving as, serving as marketing director of National Wholesale Automotive Distributor, Serfac, and chairperson of the SIMI Wholesalers Committee and a member also of the society's management board. Her career to date has included communications, marketing, and change management roles in consultancy and with Guinness, Diageo and Bank of Ireland. Gillian, all of that is correct. Good to see you. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Jackie. Delighted to join everyone this evening. Great to have you, Gillian. An extensive and a very, very impressive CV. And last but certainly not least, on the bottom left-hand side of my screen is a fellow Tipperary native, Sinead Delahunty, who wore the blue and gold with distinction uh, for many a year. And you will have seen Sinead on uh, our series during lockdown. Wasn't it, Sinead? God, it feels like a long time ago now, but it wasn't sure. actually that long ago at all. So Sinead, um, her food blog, Delalicious, is very, very popular. And we had a cookery series with Sinead, uh, which brought us some very, very nice treats and ideas. And uh, juggling a career as a chartered physiotherapist as well, Sinead. So it's very, very impressive um, stuff. So uh, good to have the three of you on board, folks. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, your good self, Sinead. Um, the obvious question that I have for you with the food blogging and being a physiotherapist and, and through COVID and everything that we've lived through and experienced in more recent times, how have you managed to combine everything and to juggle all of these uh, various roles that you have? Yeah, so I suppose I've been juggling for you know quite a long time, um, so I'm quite used to it. Um, but I think really like being but a club and a county player previously has really stood to me alongside now being a chartered physio with a and having a food business on the side. Um, so it really is about like optimization of your time. And um, anybody who knows me kind of knows that I live by my diary and like, you know, putting in actually when you have training, obviously I'm working nine to five, Monday, to Friday. And then alongside that, actually like putting in like when you're having fun time, when you're going out with your friends, um and then also what I kind of like to do is like divide my day into like what I call like different hats or different uniforms 
So we'll say like nine to five, I'm a physio. So I'm not a footballer during that time. I'm not a food blogger. I'm very much a physio. So like I would stay away from my phone. I love airplane mode. I use it like during all my working day. So when I'm in work, I'm present. I'm in work. I'm working. Likewise, like if I'm training, I'm on the field. So I don't have my phone in my hand. I'm not food blogging. I'm training. So I'm very present then in what I'm doing. And I'm, I, I just think that that aids me with like my concentration and likewise to just be present in what I'm doing. So it might like look like you're doing one thing and not lots of things, but that allows me then to be quite efficient with my time. And when I'm doing certain things, I'm present and I'm, I'm doing that thing. So that really allows me to be lots of things at the same time, but really within designated time periods. And you'll hear like from lots of players, like they what they enjoy about football or being on the field to play is that they're like they have a bit of me time where they like they're they're away from the other distractions or maybe things in their life that maybe aren't going well. And that would be the same thing for me that I currently work in post COVID nineteen rehabilitation, so it's very new um thing in the world. Likewise, in in terms of physiotherapy, and it's, it's very challenging. It's very demanding um you take on a lot of emotions and you know people are going through life-changing things really in any aspect of physiotherapy so like for me it's when I get on my bike on the way home or into my car on the way home like I leave physio behind me that's gone if if you live with me as a lot of my teammates do um you know you wouldn't hear me talk about physio I leave that at the doorstep um and you know I step into being the other part of Sinead Delahunty so I think that's really important to be able to set boundaries. And likewise, I've lots of friends outside of football. So that's important as well, that you're not just consuming yourself just with football or likewise with the other two participants tonight, maybe motion, that you, you spend your time outside of the sport or outside of your profession and just you as a person. Okay. There's a lot in that and I'm sure there's a lot of... Um elements of that answer resonating with our fellow panelists tonight as well and also our guests on the webinar uh, just to let people know that we will take questions and answers uh, at the end of the session um, so if you have anything you'd like to ask our panelists about please do this is career guidance uh, we were all at a stage where we wondered what we were going to do before we decided to venture down our various paths um, Gillian Fanning great to have you on board um, I, I, I can uh, probably take an educated guess and uh, conclude that you're a busy family woman as well, uh, <laughs> judging by the picture over your, le over your left shoulder as I look. Yes. Um, so how do you manage to keep every, uh, all of the balls in the air, so to speak, and, and keep everything ticking over? Oh, well, I, I wish I was as disciplined as you need to put my uh, set my phone to flight mode uh, more often, but that's a good tip. So I think I'll, I'll give that a go. Um, again, you know, it's it's really a matter of being organized and having your diary organized and kind of knowing where you're supposed to be at any particular <laughs> given point in time. Um, look, I think, you know, everybody, no matter what industry you're in or what you're doing, life has just got so busy for everybody um, that it really is a case, isn't it, of just keeping multiple plates spinning in the air uh, at all times. Um, but definitely, you know, uh, I suppose diarising as, as much as you can. And, you know, the phone does help with that. So you getting reminders about, you know, what you're supposed to be doing and where you're supposed to be, be at a, any particular time. Yeah, it's a very useful uh, app, I have to say, or, or an element of the iPhone as the calendar. It helps to, to keep things some bit um, streamlined. Mary, what brought you or Mary Nolan? Good to have you on board as well. Um, can I ask you, Mary, what brought you into uh, the motor industry in, in the first place? What was what was the interest there? What sparked uh, your career? Might be a little delay at your side, Mary. I hope you can hear me. You're back there. I missed that. I just keep losing the connection there. I'm so sorry, Jackie. You're OK, you Mary. Mind? I'll try that question again. You seem to be there now. Mary, what brought, what brought you into the motor industry and, or what sparked your interest in this industry? Um, 
I suppose, to be honest, I stumbled across it in some, some ways in that um, I am from a bank and I worked with Anglo Irish Bank for 15 years and then the Central Remedial Clinic for six years. And I was looking for a new challenge and um, I was interviewing for a couple of jobs and then met with their CEO, Gavin. And I suppose what motivated me to, to join the industry was his kind of passion um, and his drive. He's very driven and that's how I am. I like to be around that high energy. Um, and I was so delighted so late in my career to have that opportunity. And also he spoke openly about uh, trying to bring more women into his management team. You know, our current workforce in the Joe Duffy group, we have about 20% female and we are trying to grow that um, internally and externally with associations like with the LGFA, with Breast Cancer Ireland and, and so on. So yeah, it was for me, it's about who you, who you work with and what drives you. So uh, I think the com company is also a very young company, Jackie. So um, getting on myself, it was great to be around that new energy again. And uh, I, I love young people. I love being around them because it kind of fuels you to, to, to push yourself and push your own boundaries. Mary, you've preempted my next question in that do you find there are challenges working in you mentioned the 20 percent figure there mm -hmm. but are there challenges working in what is still i guess majority uh, a male dominated industry if you say 20 percent female well then obviously it stands to reason that there's 80 percent uh, male does that present challenges to, to you and fellow females yeah it does of course i mean there's no point in denying it it is it's like construction it's like architecture they tend to be there's a you know there's an unconscious bias there jackie that it, it's a male world and yes it is it is it is changing and again referring back to the next generation that they're much more respectful and more open-minded than maybe my generation were but there are challenges, yes, but I say embrace them. You know, sometimes as women, we don't do ourselves any favours in that we, you know, we, we question our own ability. Um, I say embrace the competition. That would be how I, I would approach it. And again, I'm, I'm looking with the Joe Duffy group. We have a very young team who are uh, much more conducive. But equally, I think we have, um, generation has changed, you know, most, both, We'll keep an eye on that line, Mary. We'll keep an eye on that line. We'll move back to yourself for a second, Shane. We'll keep an eye on your line, Mary. It just seems to be dropping a little bit in and out there. Um, Sinead, the, the blog De La Licious, which we, we which we know a lot about, we've given away books. We've obviously featured some of your recipes. What encouraged you to start uh, that blog? Was it the, the nutritional aspect of performance or was there a different uh, catalyst for that? Yeah, um, no, and I just want to thank the LGFA for all their support through all the years of it really to be honest um along with you Jackie um but really the catalyst behind it was actually my older brother um Owen so um yeah back in 2015 he was coming up to Valentine's Day and he kind of been texting me maybe for like the kind of December and January prior to it and he was like oh you do so much cooking and kind of blogs were becoming a thing and he was like oh you should start a blog start a food blog and to be honest I was like gosh sure you will read this like you know had kind of all those doubts like Mary said kind of probably put yourself down a bit and he just kind of pestered me enough and I was like okay right okay I'll just give it a go just kind of you know put some put some teeth and um yeah so I, I set it up I kind of shared it on my Instagram at the time Instagram was like very young probably had very few followers and um set it out it was actually valentine's day back in 2015 and um then the next day I, I go into work and um we're in the tea room and it's back in the day when you have loads of people in the room at the same time and when the girls like oh you set up a food blog and i was just like it was honestly like being outed like i don't know against the crime or something and i was just like oh my god was like what like why are you saying this in front of everybody and then he's like what's this what's this person you done and suddenly i was like oh yeah i have I, set up a food blog yeah for the rest of there last night and um and then just straight away like just kind of like kind of was a lot of friends and family and colleagues kind of started following us and liking it and just kind of sprawled from there but I suppose it's like it's very rich I suppose in my like heritage I suppose in origin so I'm from Tiberi like you said I come from like a long line of farmers and home cooks so to say um I suppose just like making something from nothing is very ordinary and very usual for me whereas like as I suppose I developed through college and like living with and 
colleagues or friends in physio and whatnot and learning that actually maybe they don't have the same set of skills that I might have like and grew up with and just sharing that knowledge um, became just very something ordinary for me to share how I live my life, how I like love and share my love for food. And I suppose the mediums of social media is just a really, really easy way to share that passion as lots of people would do with other passions in their life. Um, so it's just something I suppose I learned that I'm actually quite a good teacher maybe through my physiotherapy background. Like I teach people every day maybe how to live their lives better or overcome injuries or illnesses and, you know, fulfill their potential or return to their previous level of high level of function. So it kind of was a very natural thing for me to be able to do to share my passion and um, just allow everyone to learn that you can cook. You, It's not something elitism. Everybody can cook. It's, nobody needs to be a mission star chef, but everyone can be a home cook. And just share it with a creative aspect. And in another aspect, I suppose, when I set up the blog, I was playing county football, you know, in a county set up with tip. Um, you know, at times it was high pressure, likewise you know um in a high performing club set up as well with box box cabin Healy mm. and it really was an outlet I suppose away from that as well something fun something different it's opened up so many different avenues in my life you know being on tv um on Ireland AM sharing my recipes as well it's just something really exciting really fun to be around so that kind of diversity I suppose really comes through and a little bit of kind of unplanned um elements is really nice in, in my daily schedule as well. Brilliant stuff, yeah, and and we follow your career with with, with great interest in it and and continued success. What comes across from you from you three is the diversity of roles that you've had and your ability to adapt to to new environments. So Gillian, I guess, with experience in Di- Diageo and Bank of Ireland, to now working in the motor industries, how do those different industries uh, compare? Well, I suppose in terms of the industries themselves, Jackie, they'd be very different. Um, obviously, you know, the, the drinks industry is very dynamic and um, the, the financial services industry um, would be more traditional. Um, and I suppose to some extent, the motor industry would kind of be a blend of both. Um, in terms of, I suppose, another difference would be that in drinks and in financial services, the industry tends to be dominated by, you know, a few big players whereas the motor industry is made up like of a lot of different sectors, different size businesses. On the one hand, you'd have the, you know, the importers and distributors, which would be the bigger companies, but then you've lots of smaller family businesses all over the country. So from that perspective, you know, they they would be different in terms of my own role. um, I guess I've always worked in, in, um, Keep an eye on your line as well, Gillian. Is, is it my side or, or can everybody, can everyone, okay. We'll come back to you, Gillian. Hold that thought. Um, Mary, we'll try you again as well. Um, the, maybe to talk to me about the, the attitudes or, or changes within different, um, w- within recent years in the industry, Mary. Have you noticed much of that? Yes, I have, Jackie. Thank- thankfully, there has been a lot of change and um, UK are very good drivers as well actually believe it or not in Ireland I think we have um, maybe 17% of the industry are female in in our EU counterparts might be only 15% are the latest figures having said that the likes of the UK have come up with a new initiative it's called um, you know succeeding as as a woman in the autumn automotive industry and they have awards every year where they recognize and they promote women in business there's that there's a whole digitalization of on uh, online sh- well, i think we might have lost mary again we, we have glitches in the matrix we, we've little gremlins at play uh, here you're, you're back mary go on I have, <laughs> but yes, there's been some very positive changes. Thankfully, U- UK, uh, as I said, are very much involved with promoting women in business. As uh, Simai themselves here, uh, Gillian and our colleagues do a lot. Of- 
lot of stuff around women our group for example but i think in general young, young, younger people and um, particularly young males are uh, changing and have are much more open-minded than probably you know the unconscious bias of that it, our industry is male dominated so yes see some very positive changes coming down the road cao for example this year put uh, technicians um four year program onto the cao which was fantastic but still, uh, women uh, apprentices and technicians are still very, uh, very lowly represented. And um, the other thing, we, we talk all the time about women in uh, male dominated um, industries and we speak about representation. And that's absolutely right. But I think until we start seeing more females in senior roles from LGBT and disabled um, diversities, only then will it become the norm as we see more people like Gillian, the first woman, woman president. It's when that becomes more normal and um, that's when I think we'll see bigger changes. But there is positivity, electrification, digitalization has opened a lot, lot more new roles um, where people are not just thinking of the motor industry as buying and selling cars or fixing a car. They see the other roles, finance, marketing, HR. So yeah, positive changes come and albeit it, it is a little bit slower probably that, that, than we would like. Okay, well, pro progress, it, it is getting there, as you say, Mary, which is great to hear. Um, Gillian, bearing in mind what Mary has said there, uh, why would you encourage women to join uh, the motor industry? Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I, my connection dropped there, I think. So I, I actually missed most of what Mary was saying, but um, I would I, I, I would encourage women to join because it's a it's a very diverse industry. It's a dynamic industry. Um, it's going through a huge amount of change um, at the moment. Um, there's so many different roles. Um, and I think Mary mentioned that 20% uh, of the, the workforce, I think in her company are, are female. That's actually higher than the average in the industry as a whole. I think it's about 17% uh, in Ireland, which is about 2% higher than the rest of Europe and in America, where it would be around 15%. So there's definitely uh, an opportunity. I mean, women, it's so important to have that diversity in the workplace and to have more women working in the industry. Um, I mean, it, research has shown that, you know, women have a particular skill set that they bring to businesses and help companies perform. They're better in terms of collaboration, communication, participative leadership. So it's, there's so many opportunities in the motor industry at the moment for, for women to join. And uh, obviously across the board, all, diff all different sectors, different roles, you know, everything from um, the technical side, um, right through to IT, to sales, marketing, testing, vehicle body repair. Um, so there's, there's an endless amount of opportunities. And uh, in fact, if, if anyone is interested in working in the industry, they can go onto the SAMI website where there's a, a dedicated careers area. And I think there's something like maybe 107 different member companies on there at the moment looking for uh, looking for um, or advertising job opportunities. So um, if anyone is interested, the, the website is well worth the visit. Brilliant. It's great to hear, Sinead, that there is so much opportunity. I know it, it's a... Uh... It's a field you might not be that familiar with, but obviously as a Gaelic for Teens ambassador, you're aware of the relationship between Zucar and the LGFA. And, and I think the performance link is just a, a really, really nice fit uh, for both Zucar and for the LGFA. Um, just really good, strong, positive figures that, that, that Gillian and Mary are talking about there, Sinead. It definitely nearly be enticing me across after watching. Absolutely, right same here, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's a really really cool i think uh industry to be in definitely yeah but i suppose like the performance side you know and you would have seen in you know episodes like drive survivor netflix and um, the importance of like you know but the the player and the, the technician elements on like performance and that comes back to us as players in terms of like you know nutrition and hydration as well like you see the guys constantly like sipping water so like hydration is like their number one thing and they're in the cars for such a long time um so that just like sends back to like kind of the basis of any high performing athlete which you know we all aspire to be and our just high functioning really person and individual is like the basis of hydration like our bodies are made of about 60 percent water so if we're not adequately hydrated um that would be kind of be our first line therapy we'll say in terms of like any hospital treatment is get the patient hydrated 
so that just stems back into like you know nutrition and food for me is really going back to the basics you know getting your hydration good getting your sleep good and eating adequately and I've I suppose experience of eating inadequately and having a neg- negative performance and um, just on my whole body you know when I had menorrhea a couple of years ago um you know and it's the thing that we highlighted through Fitter Woman collaborations with the LGSA as well the importance of menstrual health so just looking at our overall health is so important as, as athletes and just as, as females for every part of our lives um, whether on the field or off the field yeah absolutely um Mary back to your good self if if your if your connection is holding up there we'll try it uh can you hear us there Mary We might come back to Mary in a second. Gillian, we'll come back to you. Um, your CV, as I say, it, it, it's, it's hugely impressive. Um, how does it feel being the first female uh, president of SIMI in the society's 99-year history? It's a, it's a storied history, and you've obviously made your own unique piece of history as well, Gillian. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, obviously, I'm delighted to, to be the first woman president. Um, I'm deli- I think it sets a precedent. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that many other women follow in my footsteps in terms of, you know, becoming involved with the industry and with the, uh, the SAMI. Um, we've more women than ever now involved with SAMI. Um, we have three women on the board. When I joined, um, I was the only one. Um, we have, there's more women than ever in senior management positions in the industry. So I'm just hoping that, um, you know, my, me being in this role as president makes the industry more visible to other women and encourages women, more women to get involved in the industry. Because I think there's no doubt it's traditionally it's viewed as a traditional male dominated industry. Um, And, you know, in fact it is and has been a male dominated industry, but you know, there are more and more women joining all the time. And as I said already, so many different roles um, in the industry, there's just no reason for more women not to be involved. Well, I I love first like that, Gillian, I think it's an incredible achievement on your behalf. Do you derive satisfaction from your your own career path and, and to reach a milestone like that or is there also satisfaction from being the first female to do that if that if that makes sense and and that trailblazing aspect as well and being 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 a leader for for potentially others to follow yeah i mean you know my i suppose i i didn't set out to become president in the motor industry um after my roles with Diageo and bank of ireland and, and public relations i actually went back and joined my family business um in in the motor industry so um it was you know it was uh, i suppose i i always intended to come back and join the family business at some stage and um, then i got involved with the simi um, and uh, became chairperson of the wholesalers committee then got involved with the management board and you know was then um, appointed president so yes I mean there's there is great satisfaction there and as I said I mean if if it you know raises the profile of women in the industry um, and encourages more women to be involved then you know I feel that I've done my job. Um, can I ask uh, Mary um what kind of roles there would be available for uh, in the Joe Duffy group and Zucar and how would you inv- advise somebody who might be thinking of that kind of career or starting out on that career path Mary what what, what would be the words of wisdom or, or the perils of advice that you might have we, uh, we we have you you're on mute there Mary if you want to come off mute there for a second did you did you catch the question Mary I did indeed. Sorry, Jackie. Yeah, I, I, I suppose that the thing I'd always advise is be an aggressive learner. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions if you don't know the answer. It's OK to ask. Um, and, you know, try and get mentored by somebody. I, I've always found that helpful. And I think more and more people um, are becoming, you know, more accustomed to looking for help and um, never stop learning. Knowledge is power. It would be one thing if you're starting off in your career and um as we say at induction, feedback is the food, food of champions. So don't be afraid to ask for it. Sometimes we wait till we're told. So anybody young, I say to my 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 young uh, kids, I say when you 
go to work, ask for feedback, you know, say, how am I doing? Could I do better? Because I'm not to try not to take it personally, although we all do, of course, we're human. But, but um, to be an aggressive. Yeah, I think we've lost that link again, just temporarily. Um, an aggressive learner, I like learner. that. And, and the, yeah, I like the, that. That what Mary is talking about there, uh, Gillian, I think is very pertinent. An aggressive Sorry, learner. It, it, it put me a little bit when I was a little bit younger. Um, in terms of. Okay, we're having some. We're having some little glitches. All right. Yeah, we can hear you perfectly, Mary. There. You're just there's a little bit of a delay there, so we'll go back to Gillian for a second. Gillian, just picking up on what Mary is talking about there. I think you know, an, an aggressive learner is 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 a wonderful way of phrasing it, but hard work goes an awful long way too doesn't it yeah absolutely um and certainly in my experience i think um relationship building is really important um uh, you know when i started my career in public relations obviously i was working with a lot of different companies so i you know would have come across a lot of different people would have in, had insights to a lot of different businesses and that's really really kind of um that's really helped me, I think, in my career, that ability to be able to build relationships with different people from different backgrounds and different businesses. Um, so I would say to anybody, you know, do, do focus on relationship building, try and identify um, areas of commonality with other people, because it's amazing, like, you know, I, I will now bump into people that I met, like, you know, years ago in, in previous jobs um, or I'll need something and I have a network there that I can call on, that I can kind of get things done. And I think that's really, really important. So definitely, I mean, my my first boss in, in public relations, um, he was an ex Fleet Street journalist, very old school um, Englishman. And, you know, he taught me really that communication is like the most important thing no matter what job what what industry you're in i think you know communication and, and focusing on your communication is very very important and will always help you throughout your career absolutely um how have things changed then throughout the pandemic in that regard do you, you talk about we were obviously all so used to the the the, the face-to-face and the one-to-one -one and you know, the, the quick five minute chat or, you know, if you want to vent something or get something off your chest, there was always somebody in pretty close proximity. Now we're in, we're, we're, we're still, you know, hopefully we're coming out the right end of it, but we're, we're in a different world now, a different environment in terms of the relationship building that you're talking about there. It's, it, it's more of a challenge in many ways. Yeah, very much so. But I think it's incredible the way people have adapted um, and particularly in the motor industry. Um, you know, as I said before, some of the businesses would be very small. Um, but the, the way in which SIMI members adapted to digital communication and Zooms and, um, you know, buying and selling cars like on, online without you know, have without having that kind of face to face customer interaction. I mean, it was nothing short of miraculous almost in some cases, because, you know, many of the, the smaller businesses wouldn't have had the infrastructure that the larger businesses would have had. So they really did transform, um, you know, the, the, the whole the, through COVID, they really did many of them transform their businesses. And, you know, I think the investment in, um, in IT and, and in communication um, will really help. I think the industry has taken a great leap forward over the last 18 months to two years, and I think it will really stand the industry in good stead. Um, but yes, I mean, it's, it's really been a fundamental difference in the way we do business, um, for sure. Absolutely. So we've talked about learning, aggressive learning. We've talked about building relationships. We've talked about hard work. And I suppose uh, all of those factors are hugely important, um, Sinead, but you also have to be motivated, okay, to, 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 to do what you do. So you're working five days a week in a hospital. Uh, you're going home then, or you, you try and get home whenever you can. Uh, you have club, club activity. You, you have the blog. How do, you, how do you manage to maybe turn your motivation from, from one thing to another to another, perhaps two or three times a day at different times of the day. It's, I, I think it's a, it's remarkable. How do you manage it? Um, well, I think it's was it echoes on like what Mary and Jimmy have already said. Like 
surround your, surrounding yourself by like positive and uplifting people I think is really important and staying away from negative people so you're staying in like a high energy state <clears throat> likewise obviously making sure you have enough energy for all of your day and you're recovering well like from training or likewise from work or you know other aspects of my life so you know sleeping well is, is a priority but I really think that's what kind of underpins a lot of it is what Mary said as well is actually I got the first opportunity and um, I've taken part in the GBA Jim Madden program, the leadership program, um, which is available to all intercounty athletes. And I just recommend everyone really take part in it if, if they are um, kind of eligible. So um, alongside that leadership program, I also got to work with a mentor. So as Mary said, like, it's just really, really, really influential, really, in your life. And I suppose if I look back, like, you know, to even when I was in school, I probably had mentors there in terms of teachers. Likewise, when I was in college, maybe it was older club members or older inter-county uh, members that I was playing alongside. And then likewise, when I moved into more of a working role, role got to work then alongside a mentor as part of the Jim Madden GPA program. So really, like, what it underpins a lot of that is really goal setting. And, like, I'd like to think, like, every inter-county and club team would set goals at the start of every year, you know, and, and figure out what, what you're actually working for. But likewise, in terms of refreshing, I would always, in terms of a physiotherapist, be working towards either developing from a basic grade to a senior, or a senior maybe to a higher level physiotherapist. So you're always trying to achieve goals, either in terms of professional or likewise sporting. And then alongside that, alongside that in terms of my blog, that's completely me. I don't have a team. It's very much myself. So I suppose I brought those kind of skills across into that side of my life and and actually would set goals like on a month-to-month -month basis so that's like you know it focuses me if I have targets I don't meet them all the time I and most importantly I set like smart goals so they're achievable they're specific they're measurable and they're realistic and, and they're they're timely so you know if I don't meet a goal like I could reset it maybe for the next month or maybe set it out for a longer period of time if I'm if I'm busier in other aspects of my life and I think I suppose a lot of people would say to me, oh, like, you know, you're very successful in all areas of your life. But, you know, I was like, you know, like this month, like for me, football has been the focus. So professional wise, you know, I I'm getting through my job, but I'm, I'm not overachieving in any aspect. I'm keeping my food, you know, blog and business just ticking along. Whereas in other times, um, particularly prior to the pandemic and prior to this current role that I'm working in as a physiotherapist, I was probably more and um, focusing on my football or, or food blogs by the thing so I suppose you're constantly like kind of shifting your priorities and and that's important when you know why you're doing it and and, and set goals specific for each area so I think really goal setting is, is so so important it just it sets your targets it creates focus and then likewise you can look back and and, and see you know if you're achieving them and if not why not and, and reach out for help and support like Mary's mentioning in terms of mentorship or likewise support from your your colleagues or teammates or your your coaching team or likewise you know just in any aspect that I've achieved in terms of food really it has been from actually asking for help and reaching out for help and I would say the hardest step is probably that like asking like nine times out of ten someone is going to come to you with open arms giving you the help and that's the really nice part but it's actually that like that first step it's, it's asking is, is probably the hardest thing and I'd go back and say like the, the GPA again are just phenomenal and the LGFA are phenomenal anytime I've asked for help just the support I've got is, is, is phenomenal and just more than probably I expected to receive so yeah just want to say thanks for all that as well no problem anytime you're, you're more than welcome and you talk about goal setting there we'll try and come back to Mary she's having some little technical issues still I think but you're, you're still with us Mary are you back? Are you on mute? You're on mute again. Come off mute there and we'll, we'll try and get you back on. Um, Sorry, Jackie. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. You're, I tell you what, it, it was a funny thing earlier on. Well, it wasn't funny. It was, I was, uh, it was about seven o'clock and I was wondering whether I'd get on myself. The, the, I think Storm Barra might be having a little bit of a lingering yeah. impact on, on, on some of our that networks. That's not to blame, isn't it, for me anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Mary, can I ask you, Mary, the... Um, and Gillian has talked about it, but to, to you, the importance of relationship building and uh, not just relationship building, but sustaining 
and fostering those relationships and minding them because okay you might have uh built up good working relationships with people but I, they can go one way or the other they can they can stay good or they might regress a little so you've got to be conscious as well to to, to work on those relationships that you've built up in the first place mm. yeah i mean it, it teamwork i'm sure Sinead and Gillian will, will agree and particularly in, in the sporting world t- teamwork is it so the relationship with the full team i mean we might like everybody, but I think we have to respect everybody's role, whether it's in work or on, on, a, on a team. So I, I think respect is a, is a big part of that relationship building. Um, and, and sometimes we align ourselves to people that maybe won't challenge us so much. And I, I would always say make relationships with all sorts of people and people who do challenge you. I think Gillian mentioned about she has people now she can call upon if she needs some guidance or advice or, or, or whatever, whether it's business or, or otherwise. But also, you know, I, I think relationships and work eventually flow over into lifelong friendships if you're lucky enough to work with some inspiring people. Um, Sinead, I think, is probably best poised to talk about relationships because she's got so many between her team and her work. It's just an incredible, uh, an incredible lady, uh, which we're, I think we're all very inspired by. Yeah. I'll pick up that point then, Sinead. I mean, the, the, the people that you deal with and how you manage to, to you know, I, I talk about you bouncing from one role to the next and how do you manage to, to, to foster and nurture so many different relationships in so many different spheres? Yeah, like it's definitely tough, but I, I think as Mary said, it's actually being quite personal and as Gillian said, like finding that commonality and, you know, as, as both underpins, like actually friendship coming between us all. So similar in my profession, actually on the ground in terms of physiotherapy, it's actually quite female dominated. But actually, if you look at the whole at the hospital in terms of maybe the higher echelons of, 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 of a hospital dynamic, it would be the consultants, which are actually probably 80% male, 20% female. So in my current role, I work a lot. Actually, my colleagues are actually direct consultants and they're all males. Um, so actually, sport has been really, really beneficial. In that point of view, um, a lot of them would be embedded in GA and creating that connection there straight away was qu- quite good and probably earned a lot of like, respect um, from them directly. Um, so I think that probably kind of gave me confidence then when I was coming to them with patients or like when making decisions about patients that they trusted me, that they felt, oh yeah, this person kind of knows what they're doing. But underneath all that I've set up two new services this year and worked with a lot of people across other spectrums of the hospital that I really wouldn't have had any relationships before so as Mary and Julian have mentioned really it is like underpinning that commonality like setting goals for the service for the team that you're working within and I really focused on a lot of the skills I would have come across among football and likewise that I understood maybe through the gym Madden leadership program that actually I had maybe as weaknesses. So I really focused on those things and how I could um, progress them and, and embed them in this new team. And really the main thing was communication. Uh, like making sure everybody like felt equal, felt on the same page. And again, I suppose that comes through like through football training. Like everybody knows we're training Wednesday and Friday at half seven. So you just you just turn up. You don't if, if you can't be there, you let you let the manager know. And that shares, or you likewise, you let the team members know. So that shares through the team group, we'll say, on WhatsApp. So just creating simple little commonalities like that, equal communication, um, and likewise setting clear goals, I think was, was a really important part. So everybody had a voice. Everybody knew what the shared goal was and, and what you could, everybody could aspire to. But alongside that, in the two teams that I've set up this year was setting then weekly team meetings. So I suppose in terms of football, that would be coming from training and having a chat before and afterwards. Um, but likewise, in terms of the new teams that I've set up, it was just actually meeting and being very open and honest and being like, you know, any problems, any issues, how can we improve? And just kind of laying the slate clean, allowing everybody to help each other and not having any hierarchy was really important. So again, equality and equal voice and really prioritizing the service and obviously in my case then like patient health really came to the forefront and that really really embedded a lot of success 
and, and long-term success in the service. Brilliant. So I think definitely like sport is just huge. You learn so much through defeat as I've experienced in the last few days, as well as success. And through defeat, like, you know, it causes you a lot of like reflection and reflection is really important, I think, for all aspects of life and business or sport. Yeah, you've had a great run with Fox Rock Cabin TD. Um, Sinead, and you should be very proud of your achievements. I know Dunboyne was I'm obviously a massive breakthrough for them, but you know, it's 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 a uh, and Fox Rock Cabin TD have been terrific champions, and you've, you've done yourself so so proud. And Gillian, um, Sinead talks about communication, and obviously, there are effective ways to communicate. So, how would you describe your communication style? Um, I would say I have a fairly open communication style. Um, I think in our industry, it's well, and in probably in any industry, it's it's important to be direct and to avoid the jargon. I think people can get bogged down in jargon. Um, but I think my style would definitely be open. Um, it would be collaborative. Um, I think I'm a good listener, which I think is really important. Um. Uh, in any business and uh, you know particularly in the motor industry because we have so many different sectors um, and some of those sectors are actually competing with each other everybody has their own opinions and their own views so I think it's it's important that you know people listen um, so yeah I, I think really listening would be um, a key attribute um, in terms of communication style and just be open and direct really and um, you know, I think that helps with any communication. Uh, Ginny, you're probably you're probably aware when we talk to sports people, we ask them who maybe their their role model was, or somebody they looked up to as a kid, who they would they would like to aspire to be or, or to follow in, in that player's footsteps. Um, who would be your who would be the biggest influence on on your career and and where and the journey you, you've you, you've went on and continue to go on. Um, I guess I've been influenced by a number of different people throughout my career. I mean, I didn't mention my first boss um, I think he was very influential in terms of so. So a, a number of people throughout my career would have influenced me. I mean, I guess in terms of um, the bigger picture or more known people, um, one person who I find quite inspiring is a lady called Marsha Kilgore and Marsha. Um, most people are probably aware of, of a brand called Soap and Glory that's I think now owned by Boots actually. But Marsha started off life as a beauty therapist, then established a chain of spas and beauty salons in the States, sold them to um, LVMH, a big French company for millions, then started Soap and Glory, then started another company called Fitflop, um, now, is now, um, is now in her fourth or fifth company um she has a company called beauty pie but i just think she's she's amazing she's just obviously so motivated by her job because she certainly has more than enough money to to give up work if she wanted to um but she's still she's there on instagram she replies to um to posts on instagram at all hours of the day and night she's obviously one of these people who who doesn't need to sleep but i would find her very inspirational Okay, interesting. And Mary, from your from your own standpoint, um, trying to get on this this journey of life and this journey of work. There, Jackie. Uh, are you there, Mary? We can hear you. Have we got you, Mary? Mary, you're back. I think. Are you are you on mute? You're on mute again. You're back. We have you. Do we? We do. Good. Mary, final question for you before we take a few questions from people who, who have been uh, following our conversation. Um, any recommendations to young players or, or young females in general on how to manage time between you know, various commitments that they have in terms of study, some, some perhaps working and, and trying to combine sporting commitments on top of all that? I think they should ring Sinead because she's the, <laughs> an example of it. Um, like she said, a timetable trying to stick with it. But for, for me, the only advice I'd say, get up early during the week. You know, if you start your day early, I think you're, you've, you've, you've got a head start. Um, and think particularly when you're younger, if, if you're not committed, that, that, that can be a kind of a way of life you have to train yourself. But I think Sinead's the expert, phenomenal career. 
in a sport, her business, her, you know, I, I'm a complete all, but yeah, keeping a diary, being organized, sticking to your commitments where you can, but also allow a little bit of time for fun because we all need downtime. I think we all work very hard uh, and particularly with COVID and the challenges that has set us mentally and personally, you know, where maybe you may not have been able to get out for training at the beginning. And I'm sure that was tough. Sinead might talk about how, how, how she managed that um, in her timetable during COVID when you couldn't go out and train. How, how did that go, Sinead? Sorry, you just digressed there a little bit. Um, yeah, so I suppose a, a lot of clubs like ourselves, you know, did maybe online Zooms or we had programs to do. Um, so I think it definitely kind of provided me with a bit, of, a bit of consistency as well. I was fortunate to be still working and still be in a hospital alongside colleagues, but it gave me definitely an outlet away from that, you know, a, a bit of me time, I suppose, like out in the field by myself training. It was definitely hard. Uh, I definitely won't, won't want to do it again, but it definitely, um, I suppose, to, Creates a virtual togetherness, you know, which is really nice and, and a link between all the players. Yeah, that's tough going, I'd say. Yeah. Mary, what, what, what I, I think one of the one of the key takeaways for people here, and certainly for myself, um, and for for people tuning in, is the, is the range of opportunities uh, in the motor industry, which which seems to be, you know, obviously everybody's come through challenging times throughout this pandemic but it seems that the motor industry is in a good place and that there are genuine opportunities for people if they wish to explore uh, this as a career keep losing you guys i'm so we'll try you again mary can you hear me now i'll tell you what we'll do we'll, we'll see if we've got some questions um Claire, what we're going to do, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up. So what I would really, really like to thank uh, my guests and Gillian is back as well, right yeah, on cue. Sorry about that. I didn't no problem, that. guys. Uh, it, it's one of those. It's one of those. It's uh, some fabulous insights, I have to say, uh, my special guests. And they've, they've gone musical chairs since we started the call. <laughs> on the top left-hand side of my screen now is Sinead Delahunty, uh, Gaily for Teens Ambassador. Um and uh, leading Claire as well, and uh, chartered physio, and uh, got the food blog, delicious as well. Sinead, you've got it all going on, absolutely fabulous. Uh, yeah. Mary Nolan as well, thanks for shining a light on on, on, on the Joe Duffy group, and um, you know some fantastic opportunities there for people who are watching and, and who will watch back on this conversation as well. And to a Gillian history maker and the first female president of SIMI, in the society's 99 year history absolutely fantastic uh, stuff so thanks for coming on uh, this evening folks we're going to stop the recording and uh, please do stay with us though and we'll take some uh, questions very very shortly